Okay, we will continue our discussion on principle of hydraulic machines and system design. Uh, today I will discuss the H cube curve and system resistance curve. I mean H cube curve of the pump and of course, whenever pump is installed in a particular station, then what would be the system resistance? Because it is very important to know the system resistance because the total head, I mean total discharge, all these things are uh, you know based on the total head, the pump pump will develop a particular head, but depending upon the system resistance, what would be the deli what, would, what would be the you know discharge uh, that depends. So, we will discuss a few cases today. Uh, before I go to discuss about the H cube curve and the system resistance curve, uh, I will recapitulate a few things whatever I have discussed in the last lecture. In the last lecture, I have discussed about numerical problem, when the problem was on the uh, radial flow uh, machine. If I draw the radial flow machine again, I mean if I draw the impeller of a radial flow pump or radial flow machine. So, this is the pump impeller, it is rotating in a clockwise direction and if we have backward spacing van backward curved van and if it is a backward curved van the impeller look like this. We have also discussed that if it is straight van that is the if I draw an impeller again and if it is a straight van then blades are straight and we have discussed problem on radial flow pump where it is you know straight vents. So, purely radial flow machine, purely radial flow pump I can say. In that case, if I write the head developed at the pump using Euler equation for pumps that is H is equal to U 2 C theta 2 minus U 1 C theta 1 divided by G. This is a point 1 and this is the point 2 that is inlet and outlet respectively. So, again if I draw the inlet and outlet velocity triangles uh, particularly for this case that is purely radial flow machines, purely radial flow pumps and then we can if, if I draw the velocity triangles at the inlet then this is the velocity triangles, this is C 1 this is blade speed u 1 and this is relative velocity w 1. So, here c theta 1 is equal to 0 similarly that is a no swall at the inlet and if I draw the velocity triangles at the outlet then again it will have c theta 2 is equal to 0 and we have seen that in that case head is developed purely by the Coriolis force. Uh, now, I will discuss that even if there is a you know machines it may not be radial flow, but still we can have that uh, we can ignore the uh, salt component at the inlet and outlet uh, that is what I, I now discuss that without any swirl at the inlet and even if there is a swirl then how can I write this component. So, I am drawing an impeller again I am drawing an impeller of a radial flow pump and it is let us say backward. Uh, curved or backward spacing or backward vent curve. So, this is rotating in clockwise direction. If I take out a particular blade from this and if I draw the inlet and outlet velocity triangles and if there is no swirl at the inlet, even if there is a swirl at the inlet and if I draw the velocity triangles, velocity triangles is like this. This is u 1, this is w 1 and this is c 1 the absolute velocity. So, this is c theta 1, this is w theta 1 this is u 2, this is c 2 and this is w 2 beta 2 is the blade angle at the outlet, this is blade angle at the inlet and alpha 1 and alpha 2 are the flow angle at the inlet and outlet respectively. Now, again head developed by the pump can be written in terms of tangential velocity and the so, all component of velocity u 1 c theta 1 by z. Now, from inlet and outlet velocity angles I can write c theta 2 that equal to u 2 minus w theta 2 uh, because this is c theta 2 and this is w theta 2. This is c theta 2 and this is w theta 2. So, the c theta 2 is like this and c theta 1 will be u 1 minus w theta 1. So, if I put the value of c theta 2 and c theta 1 in expression of h in expression of h then I can write u 2 minus w theta 2 minus u 1 into u 1 minus w theta 1. 
So, divided by g. So, that is u 2 square minus u 1 square divided by z minus I can write or this is plus u 1 w theta 1 minus u 2 w theta 2 divided by z. Now, this is essentially omega if the impeller is rotating. So, impeller is rotating at omega uh, angular velocity omega then omega into r 2 square minus r 1 square by z plus this is omega into r 1 w theta 1 minus r 2 w theta 2 by g. Now, question is if blades whenever blades are designed and for centrifugal pump for a radial flow pump rather I can write radial flow pump if I for radial flow pump if blades are you know blades are design following logarithmic spiral then it can be shown then it can be shown that r 1 w theta 1 is equal to r 2 w theta 2. So, that means, when particularly radial flow pumps normally blades are designed following a logarithmic spiral and if it is designed following logarithmic spiral then it can be shown that r 1 w theta 1 is equal to r 2 w theta 2 in that case the second term vanishes. So, the second term will be equal to 0 for the blades design using uh, following logarithmic spiral. So, essentially the head developed by the pump depends upon the first component that is essentially the Coriolis force. So, this is very important. So, here head developed only by the Coriolis force component that is omega into r 2 square minus r 1 square by z. So, that is what I would like to emphasize here that even if there are swall at the inlet and outlet, but still for a radial flow pump since the blades are if blades are designed following logarithmic spiral then it can be shown that the head developed by the pump is only because of the Coriolis force. And that is what the problem that we have discussed in the last class that even for a you know a radial flow machines you know purely radial flow machines there is no axial component of velocity and uh, you know this is no mixed flow pump or axial flow pump. If the blades are designed following a logarithmic spiral then I can have we can have the head developed by the pump is essentially the omega into r 2 square minus r 1 square by z that is the Coriolis component of forces. Okay. So, with this now I will move to see what are the you know uh, different uh, in fact also I have uh, discussed last class I mean in last lecture the one efficiency known as hydraulic efficiency. So, hydraulic efficiency of the pump we have seen that hydraulic efficiency of the pump eta hydraulic can be defined as the ratio of actual head developed by the pump to the theoretical head because the expression h is equal to u 2 c theta 2 minus u 1 c theta 1 divided by g this is the actual you know ideal head because whenever we are obtaining head using this expression we did not consider any kind of losses that is there in a you know actual case. So, whenever fluid is flowing through a impeller passage, passes through an impeller of course, we cannot ignore the frictional losses. So, if we consider all those losses of and there are other losses like you know pump uh, you know uh, entry and outlet shock loss separation losses. So, if that if we consider all those losses probably the head developed by the pump should not be the uh, you know ideal head. So, we will have actual head. So, this is defined as by the ratio of actual head developed by the pump actual head developed by the pump to the ideal head, ideal head developed. So, the expression which we obtain from Euler equation for pumps is, is uh, giving the idea about the ideal head being developed by the pump, but uh, actual head developed by the pump will be lesser than that. So, this is the hydraulic efficiency that we have discussed. Now, we will discuss another three efficiencies rather another a few efficiencies one is known as mechanical efficiency that is very important. Mechanical efficiency of a pump, mechanical efficiency eta m is equal to this is again an important because you know whenever we are supplying power to the pump, whenever we are supplying power either by using electric motor because we, as, as I said many a times that we need to run the uh, impeller, we need to rotate impeller. So, whether we will be using a diesel engine or whether we will be using electric motor that depends upon 
you know situation to situation because in many cases we, if we do not have electricity we need to go for diesel engine to operate the pump, but nowadays it is not the case. So, whatever the case it is I mean whether we are operating pump using electric motor or diesel engine uh, we need to run impeller. So, of course, we need to provide some energy. So, now question is whatever power we are supplying rather we need to supply power. So, whatever power we are supplying to operate the pump but that amount of power is not supplied at the shaft of the power because there are so many other losses I mean. So, there is efficiency which is not the mechanical efficiency which is which is defined again as the ratio of I am writing it is defined again as the ratio of theoretical head theoretical you know power that must be supplied to operate the pump to operate the pump to the actual power to the actual power actual power delivered to the pump. So, as I said that uh, whenever we are connecting pump with electric motor or diesel engine probably we, we know that whatever power is coming from the motor electric motor at the outlet of the, I mean what is the power output from the electric motor that power output may not be the input part to the pump of ideal actual in theoretically that should be the input part to the pump that is power available at the shaft of the impeller, but in real in actual case it is not the case. So, power output from the motor is not the power input to the shaft of the pump there is uh, I mean a loss and to take that loss into account we define one efficiency which is known as mechanical efficiency. That means, whatever power we are supplying whenever we are connecting the shaft or the impeller axis I mean shaft of the pump with the uh, shaft with the motor then probably uh, output power from the motor is not actually transferred to this power at the pump shaft there are uh, I mean there is law there is a loss and to take that effect into account uh, we will get a relatively lesser amount of power input to the pump and that is why we are defining one efficiency which is known as the mechanical efficiency. So, the loss is only because of bearing loss because whenever we are having shaft, shaft is you know uh, there, there is a bearing because shaft is placed inside the bearing. So, there will be fix, uh, bearing losses I mean uh, frictional losses. So, we need to overcome that losses and for that we need to uh, you know somewhat amount of power will be consumed to overcome that loss and eventually we will get relatively lesser amount of power at the uh, uh, shaft of the pump. So, we are defining mechanical efficiency. So, from here I can say this mechanical efficiency can be used. So, this is very important this mechanical efficiency can be used to determine to determine the loss of power in bearing and other moving parts so of course bearing is there because shaft is you know in housed in a bearing inside a bearing so i mean whenever uh, we are having bearing we cannot trivially ignore the losses I mean uh, loss and also there are some other losses might be there are so many other if there are other moving parts. So, as I said that power which is coming from the electric motor somehow a portion of that power will be consumed to overcome the losses in bearing and other moving parts. So, we will get uh, whatever I mean uh, relatively lesser amount of power input to the shaft and that is why we are defining mechanical efficiency. We can define another efficiency. So, we have defined so far hydraulic efficiency and the mechanical efficiency. We will now define another efficiency which is known as volumetric efficiency of the pump. So, this is known as volumetric efficiency of the pump. Volumetric efficiency eta v again this is defined as the ratio of some quantities. So, volumetric efficiency is defined actual flow rate. actual flow rate produced by the pump actual flow rate produced by the pump to the theoretical flow rate that must be produced by the pump. 
So, from the definition it is clear that actual flow rate produced by the pump and theoretical flow rate that must be produced by the pump. So, whatever flow rate produced by the pump you know theoretical rather ideal that may not be the actual flow rate. So, uh, and that is why you are defining volumetric flow rate that means whenever pump is say pump is being a pump is installed to handle water. So, whenever pump is discharging water in certain place I mean in a in in, 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 in a particular industry then probably uh, water theoretical flow rate I mean actual in ideal discharge is not the actual discharge. So, maybe we are assuming that that pump is designed in such a way whenever you are designing a pump we design uh, I will say that whenever there are three important quantities are you know are there whenever you are designing a pump one is head another is discharge another is a specific speed. So, whenever you are designing a particular pump we should keep in mind that pump should be installed in that place and there whenever I mean I know that uh, a system engineer a design engineer whenever uh, he is procuring a particular pump he should supply three this, this three important data to the pump manufacturer one is head where the pump should be installed there you know what should be the actual head pump need to develop and against that particular head what should be the uh, discharge what should be the you know flow rate that pump need to supply. So, these two are very important of course, specific speed. So, whenever a particular pump is designed we know that the pump should ideally discharge this amount, uh, but in reality this is not the case I mean there are some losses there are some leakage. So, to take that leakage into account whenever we are installing a particular pump in a system I mean maybe it is radial flow pump or axial flow pump. So, we need to know that of course, we should not get I mean whenever um, design is a pump manufacturer supplying data that ok fine if you install this particular pump in a system probably if the system resistance is like this in that case pump will be able to deliver let us say Q on amount of uh, flow rate. But if we if we install that particular pump in the that system and even pump to a pump uh, uh, is installed that system where resistance is like this, but we may not get that Q on amount of flow rate because of some losses that means there will be some leakage leakage of flow rate. So, to take that leakage into account we are defining one efficiency which is volumetric efficiency. So, actual it is defined as the ratio of actual flow rate produced by the pump to the theoretical flow rate that the pump must produce. So, from this uh, ratio from this efficiency we can have an idea about that losses of liquid losses of liquid due to leakage mainly due to leakage can be determined from this efficiency from this efficiency. So, volumetric efficiency gives us an idea about the leakage of liquid I mean uh, losses of liquid due to leakage mainly due to leakage. So, although uh, we have designed pump to supply certain amount of flow rate, but if we install that pump in the system we may not get that amount because of this leakage. So, that is why you are defining one efficiency is volumetric efficiency. Last one is very important that is known as overall efficiency of the pump this is called as overall efficiency of the pump eta overall that is defined is very important. So, this is defined actual power you know output of a pump and actual to the ratio of actual power input to the pump. So, it is clear from this from the definition of the overall efficiency that whenever a, again I am repeating that if I run a particular pump using electric motor. So, if I use an electric motor to operate a particular pump uh, again it may be radial flow pump or axial flow pump or a mixed flow pump. So, actual power supplied to the pump is somewhat something that is uh, that is power output from the motor. So, actual power output of the of a pump I mean sorry actual power input to the pump is the power output from the motor and what is the actual power output of the pump that is what is the head developed by the pump and I guess the discharge and uh, density we know. So, we can calculate. So, actual power output from the pump to the actual power input to the pump is the overall efficiency. 
So, from this efficiency we can calculate that is overall efficiency can be written in terms of mechanical efficiency into volumetric efficiency. Because when you are con considering overall efficiency, we need to consider mechanical efficiency also the volumetric efficiency because mechanical efficiency gives an idea about the power input to the shaft. Maybe we are giving let us say p amount of power to the pump, but that p amount of power is not consumed by the pump itself because of, of the bearing and bearing losses and losses in other moving parts. So, that that is consumed by the pumping system. So, but we are supplying let us say some amount of power to the pump and what is the power output of the pump because we know that pump if the pump is installed to operate under a head of Q under head of H and uh, discharge Q then what could be the power output from the pump. So, uh, uh, this power output of the pump can be expressed in terms of let us say if pump is installed in a place where it delivers Q on the amount of discharge against a head of H then rho Q into G this is the power output from the pump. So, this is the power output by the pump and to operate that pump we had to supply certain amount of you know uh, power because to run the electric motor. So, this gives an overall efficiency of the pump. So, these are the efficiencies. So, we have discussed so far hydraulic efficiency, mechanical efficiency, volumetric efficiency and the overall efficiency. So, with this we next proceed to see about the proceed to discuss about H cube curve and system resistance curve. So, now we will discuss about the system resistance curve and the H cube curve of the particular pump and we will discuss that we will draw a pumping system when pump is suppose we place a particular pump just a radial flow pump again I if I can if I consider a radial flow pump and I am assuming this radial flow pump is installed in a place and it delivers water and it pump is sucking water from a sump and it is delivering water to a place. So, this is let us say this is suction gauge and this is delivery gauge, delivery pressure gauge. So, this is point 1 and this is point 2, this is D, this is S, suction, this is delivery, this is suction side, this is delivery side this is a radial flow pump or it may be a mixed flow pump. So, now an pump is installed so that it will suck liquid from a sump and it will discharge liquid to other place. If I apply steady flow energy equation between 1 and the point S, so you can see from the schematic that the head developed by the pump will be the delivery gas reading minus suction gas reading that is the head developed by the pump. So, the total head developed by the pump will be delivery gauge reading minus the suction gauge reading. So, now if I apply steady flow energy equation between point 1 and S and between point 2 D and 2 then what would be the expression that I will write and from there I will have an idea about. So, if I apply steady flow energy equation between point 1 and S then what can I write P 1 by gamma plus V 1 square by 2 z and suppose this distance is suction height h s. So, this is h s. So, plus h s is equal to P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 z plus sorry this is 0. If I take this one is datum considering this point is datum so P plus 0 is equal to plus h s plus H F S. So, this H F S losses in the suction side losses rather loss in the this H F S takes into account loss in the suction side. So, this sump is open to atmosphere. So, and of course, the area of this particular sump is very large compared to the pipe. So, we can ignore this term because V 1 is much much less than V s and this is open to atmosphere. So, gauge pressure so this is that will be 0. So, what I can write that P s by gamma is equal to minus V s square by 2 g plus H s plus H f s right. 
So, this is we can see this is the negative pressure or vacuum pressure, this is negative pressure or vacuum pressure that is pressure below atmospheric that is quite obvious because only here the atmospheric pressure is acting P atm. So, of course, here at a suction side pressure has to be less than atmospheric pressure less than atmospheric pressure otherwise water cannot be sucked. So, that is justified from this expression P s by gamma is equal to minus V s square by 2 g plus H s plus H f s. This is suction gauge reading. So, this will be obtained by the suction gauge that is placed. So, if I again apply that steady flow energy equation between point D and 2. So, if I apply again between points D and 2, then I can write that I can write that P D P 2, P 2 is essentially P atmospheric. So, P 2 by gamma plus V 2 sorry V 2 square by 2 G and suppose this height is again H D plus H D plus H F D is equal to you know P D by gamma plus V D square by 2 G and if I consider this is a datum. So, if I considering this line pump this is the datum impeller axis is the datum then I, I can write this this is the expression for if I apply steady flow energy equation between point D and 2. So, from this expression what can I write is that. So, this is again open to atmosphere. So, this is 0 and open to atmosphere this is 0 then I can write this V 2 and V z are equal I mean whenever it is supplying water I mean whenever it is discharging water to the sum this if I take this point is 2 let us say this point is 2 or this point is 2 then V 2 is equal to V d is equal to V d then I can write P d by gamma is equal to H d plus H f d. So, this is the delivery gauge reading. So, this is suction gauge reading and this is delivery gauge reading. So, what is the pressure rise across the pump impeller? So, if I uh, write the pressure rise across the pump impeller, so pressure rise so pressure rise across the impeller or across the pump is equal to P d by gamma minus P s by gamma. So, that I can write H d plus H f d minus of minus that quantity that is H s plus H f s plus V s square by 2 g. So, this will be plus because this quantity is minus. So, the total pressure rise across the pump that is pressure rise across the impeller is H d plus H f d, H f d is the frictional losses in the delivery side, H d is the static height in the delivery side plus H s static height in the suction side, frictional losses in the suction side H f s plus V s s square by 2 g, where H d, H f d is the frictional head loss in the delivery side and H f s is the frictional head loss in the suction side. So, we have the expression of pressure rise across the pump or pressure rise across the impeller is H d plus H f d plus H s plus H f s plus V s square by 2 g. Now, I can manipulate this expression to obtain a finer, finer expression. So, how can I do it? So, now I can write H d plus H f d plus H s plus H f s plus V s square by 2 g sorry I will write in a bit different form. So, this is the 
expression of so this is the expression of pressure rise across the impeller of the pump or across the pump. Now, head developed by the pump, head developed by the pump should be P d by gamma plus V d square by 2 g minus P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 g. So, this is the pressurized across the pump, but head developed by the pump should be P d by gamma plus V d square by 2 g minus P s by gamma plus V s square by 2 g. So, if I write the expression of P d by gamma minus P s, P s by gamma in this expression, then I can write if I write the expression of P d by gamma. So, if I write P d by gamma minus P s by gamma plus V d square by 2 g. minus Vs square by 2 g and if I put the expression of P d by gamma minus P s by gamma from here to this expression. So, what I can write is H d plus H f d plus H s plus H f s plus V s square by 2 g plus V d square by 2 g minus V s square by 2 g. So, this is the expression of head developed by the pump. So, the head developed by the pump is of course, this quantity P d by gamma total head at the delivery side minus the total head at the suction side. So, this is the total head developed by the pump rather head developed by the pump and in this expression pressurize is P d by gamma minus P s by gamma that expression of pressurize that I obtained from this uh, steady flow energy equation and if I plug in the value of pressurize uh, across the pump in this uh, expression that is head developed by the pump eventually I arrive at this final expression. So, if I write this expression again, so the head developed by the pump, head developed by the pump H is essentially H d plus H f d plus H s plus H f s plus V s square by 2 g plus V d square by 2 g minus V s square by 2 g. So, I am writing in three components. So, head developed the pump can be written in this form where there are three distinct terms. This is known as H I am writing this is capital H d, this is capital H s and this is the velocity head. Right. So, the total head developed by the pump is the uh, this is the, this, this is the expression which uh, dictates the total head developed by the pump. So, this H d is the delivery gauge reading. H s is the suction gauge reading and this is the component because this component is important because from this I can write that from this component I can write that head developed due to change in velocity. So, there are three distinct terms one is the delivery gauge reading another is suction gauge reading and last term is essentially the head developed due to change in velocity in the uh, you know uh, suction and delivery side. So, this is the total expression of head developed by the pump. Now, I know that pump has to, if I install a particular pump in a station then knowing the static height in the delivery side frictional losses at the delivery side static height in the suction side frictional losses of course, by knowing the velocity at the delivery and uh, suction side I can obtain the total head developed by the pump that means, how much I, I, the head will be developed by the pump. So, now if I uh, draw the h cube curve for the pump because this is very important h what will be the h cube curve of the pump. So, we have seen that 
the head developed by the pump can be written H D plus H S plus V D square minus V S S square by 2 G. So, this is the head developed by the pump. head developed by the pump. Now, this is valid this is very important I should discuss here this, this expression is valid when you know the flow at the suction and delivery side is uniform very importantly this is very important. So, this expression is valid when flow in the suction and delivery sides is uniform right. So, we have identified the head developed by the pump is having three components I mean head total head developed by the pump contribute contributed by three different components delivery gas reading, suction gas reading and head developed due to change in velocity. So, this expression is valid when flow at the suction and delivery sides are uniform is uniform, but normally this is not the case rather this is seldom true. I mean this is not the case that whenever suction side and delivery side flow should be uniform because flow is taking place through a pipe. So, whenever flow is flowing over a solid surface we know that boundary layer will definitely form. So, it is not possible to have an uniform flow. So, the this expression is not valid the, for the cases when we are not we are having non-uniform velocities at the uh, you know non-uniform flow velocity at the suction and delivery side. So, this expression can be modified H d plus H s plus alpha d into V d square minus alpha s into V s s square by 2 g where alpha d and alpha s are the velocity correction factor rather kinetic energy correction factor are the kinetic energy correction factor right. The last expression is valid when the flow in the flow in the suction and delivery pipes is not uniform rather non-uniform and which is the case in the, which, which is the actual case. So, flow in the suction and delivery side is always non-uniform because of the presence of uh, uh, solid surface and formation of boundary layer. So, it is seldom true that flow in the suction and delivery side will be uniform. So, considering that the head developed by the pump should be modified by uh, this kinetic energy correction factor. So, this is the actual expression of head being developed by the pump I mean we need to take into account alpha d and alpha s which are the kinetic energy correction factor at the inlet and outlet I mean suction delivery side. If I now draw the h cube curve. So, if I draw this is very important that h cube curve. So, what should be the this is flow rate. and this is H. So, we know that if we keep on I uh, suppose the whenever pump supplier is supplying a particular pump this they should uh, provide I mean they will provide the H cube curve of the particular pump. We need to know what will be the resistance curve system resistance curve because we know where we need to install a install the pump. So, depending upon the place we need to calculate the system resistance and probably uh, uh, that is the information that we, we need to provide, but pump manufacturers should provide the H cube curve. Normally what is seen that uh, if you keep on increasing Q of course, frictional losses will be high. So, head developed by the pump will be reduced. So, uh, because with increasing Q as I said that frictional losses in the uh, delivery side will increase I mean and also suction side. So, the total head developed by the pump will reduce. So, the H cube curve is like this. So, this point this point is if it is A this A point is known as shut off head. The head corresponding to the point A is known as shut off head. So, this is the H cube curve of the pump right. Why this is happening because I can say that this is not a desirable for the pump operation I will show you and if the pump H cube curves looks like this it is very 
uh, you know uh, problematic because uh, if I draw the system resistance curve, I do not know the what will be the system resistance curve. So, suppose I am installing a pump in a place where suppose this is the you know symbol of the pump that I am using and it delivers water to a place where the total static height is H d small h d and pump is drawing water from a sham where we need to overcome I mean pump needs to take you know total suction site and total head in the suction side is H s. So, pump should be able to develop a head so that this static height in the suction side and the static height in the delivery side should be taken into account. Now, the total head developed by the pump is H s plus H d plus frictional losses in the suction and delivery side that 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 is very important that is frictional losses. So, H s plus H d are the static heights. These are the static heights in the delivery and suction and delivery side plus frictional losses we need to take into account while we are calculating total system resistance because pump uh, H cube characteristics of the pump will be supplied by the you know manufacturer that is true, but in the, if we look if I look at the pump H cube characteristics of the particular pump then you can see that depending upon the you know nature of the system resistance we may have different operating point. But that is why you need to know the actual system resistance where pump should you know uh, should be installed. So, suppose pump is installed in a place where we are we need to we have static height in the suction side H s and static height in the delivery side H d plus some frictional losses. So, now if I draw the system resistance then suppose this is the frictional losses it depends I mean we know that from our knowledge in fluid mechanics that what would be the frictional losses in the suction side and delivery side that we can calculate. So, this is the system resistance A systems. So, this is the system resistance A system and this is having the systems uh, resistance is having static height in the suction side static height in the delivery side plus frictional losses. So, this frictional losses H f is essentially you know from fluid mechanics that is governed by F L V square by 2 G into D where F is a friction factor uh, for a laminar flow that we can calculate from 64 by R e, but in most of the cases you know in industrial application flow is not laminar because normally recommended velocity in the pipe is normally 1.5 to 2 or rather 2.5 meter per second. So, we need to calculate this F from uh, you know Moody's diagram or there are some if the flow is turbulent then we have some other correlation we need to calculate. So, that is a different issue altogether. So, now knowing the value of friction factor you know I know the length of the pipe. So, if I know the discharge cube then I can calculate what will be the value of velocity and then I can calculate frictional losses. So, this expression so this H system is H s plus H d plus F L V square by 2 G. L is the total length in the suction and delivery side. So, while calculating frictional losses that you need to take into account. So, basically this is the static height I am calling H s and this is F L V square by 2 G the frictional losses. So, I can write this quantity in terms of flow rate F L Q square divided by S square into twice G into D right it's 2 G D. So, why I am writing in terms of Q because this is the pump H cube curve which will be supplied by the pump in manufacturer and if we keep on increasing flow rate up suppose pump should be able to supply flow rate from from its operation 25 percent to 125 percent of its uh, capacity. So, uh, I cannot have zero discharge from the pump because the shut off head is there. So, we whenever pump is operating but in a range of a flow rate then of course, if I keep on increasing the flow rate since frictional losses will increase. So, head development by the pump will decrease. So, say for a, for a given pump if I would like to have Q 1 discharge then if I get H 1 amount of head and instead of that suppose again for the from the same pump if I would like to draw Q 2 amount of discharge where Q 2 is greater than Q 1 of course, I may not get H 1 because in that case head developed by the pump I mean it should be H 2 and H 2 should be lesser than H 1 and that is why it is having continuously drooping characteristics 
and that is h cube curve. Now, if I superimpose the you know system resistance curve over here, then how can I obtain the system resistance? Because I know the system resistance is having two components, one is the static height h s. So, this is static height h s. So, this is static height h s plus it is having some dynamic head loss that is that varies with you know quadratically with q. So, I will I will having a parabolic in nature. So, I have a parabolic in nature. So, this is basically dynamic head loss and this is where h f varies as q square. So, of course, pump needs to overcome the static height that is h s plus there, there is a dynamic head loss that varies quadratically with q. So, if I keep on increasing q the head system resistance will keep on increasing. So, now this is the pump h cube curve that will be supplied by the pump manufacturer and this is the system resistance curve where we are having static height plus dynamic head loss and this you know inter point of intersection is the operating point. So, this is point intersection point. So, this is q operating and this is let us say h operating. So, if this point is E then we are getting E point is h operating. So, this is the h operating. So, whenever system uh, the point at which system resistance cuts the palm h cube curve h cube curve we get the operating point. So, this is the operating point this is the operating point and q and h corresponding to the operating points are known as operating discharge and operating head. So, uh, we obtain now uh, suppose the same pump is installed in different places where probably you know uh, suction size su static height remaining same, but, but, but we would like to draw let us say relatively higher amount of discharge. In that case if I keep on increasing discharge then what will happen? So, our target is to you know have higher discharge from that particular pump. So, maybe we suppose we need the system resistance curve is like this. So, in that case we will have this is q operating 1 and this is q operating 2. So, if I like to have higher discharge from that particular pump then that head developed by the pump will be reduced that is what I was discussing that if I like to have higher amount of q then of course, we have to compromise that the head developed by the pump in that case h operating suppose this is the point f and they are h operating 1 and this is h operating 2 will be lesser than h operating 1. So, uh, this is the case. So, by tuning the system resistance I mean depending upon the system resistance uh, I mean static height we cannot have any you know control because uh, th th that depends in the situation suppose pump needs to uh, supply water in a multi storied building or in industry where uh, pump needs to supply water at say sub certain height then we cannot com uh, you know uh, compromise the static height. Uh, HD or HS and if the pump draws water from his uh, underground sum then of course, pump has to uh, uh, you know take into account the uh, static height in the suction side. Uh, in this context I will discuss that uh, normally pumps are installed in a flooded suction mode this is not a negative suction because the sum level is the pump axis the impeller axis is the pump axis. So, impeller axis is higher than the sum level. So, the in, this is called negative suction operation. But this is not a you know a, this is not a good design because always it is advisable to go for a pump installation where pump should be always the pump axis should be always below the uh, water level of the sum. This is known as flooded suction because for this case there is a probability of having some uh, an, an unreasonable phenomenon that I have discussed in the last class that is cavitation. So, to avoid the, to to avoid I mean to get you know in an effort to get relief from that kind of undesirable phenomenon uh, as far as the pump operation is concerned it is always advisable to go for the flooded suction where impeller that is a pump axis the datum of the pump rather impeller axis should be always below the uh, water level of the sum. Anyway that is a different case that I will discuss when I will discuss the system design in detail, but, but now what we have seen that uh, I can play the static suction height uh, also I can play the frictional losses, but if I now question is this is very important that suppose if I would like to have higher discharge from the pump. So, e q will be higher. So, whenever q is higher we can see that the dynamic head will keep on increasing. So, maybe 
I am getting higher Q from this particular pump and, and for that we are having let us say uh, lesser amount of head develop, but when I increasing the Q probably because of that uh, increasing increment in Q that frictional head loss the dynamic head loss will keep on increasing. So, uh, this curve may be shifted towards again uh, top. So, maybe I may not get exactly the this amount, so I may need to compromise maybe Q operating 2 is the desirable, but because if I have increased the volume flow rate from the pump. So, if I increase Q that dynamic head loss will keep on increasing and as a result of which the system resistance again be, might be steeper and it go off as a result of which I may not get exactly Q optimum 2 rather Q operating 2 I may get another Q. So, that we need to take into account. Okay. So, this is the system resistance curve and H cube curve. So, uh, you know that uh, one important aspect of a pump is the head discharge characteristics. So, head discharge characteristics is very important for the pump selection rather pump operation. So, now sometimes to obtain the H cube characteristics of a pump this is that this is the characteristics that should be supplied by the pump manufacturer and it is obtained from a test from pump testing. So, if I now try to plot the H cube curve uh, H versus cube that is the head developed by the pump versus the flow rate through the pump and this curve is obtained from the pump testing and uh, the pump curve is if I plot the you know data obtained from experiments the curve looks like this. So, this is the pump characteristics that is H cube curve and of course, I know that if we have a system resistance and there will be a two components, two parts of a system resistance. So, the system resistance curve, system resistance, it is having two different part, one is static height, H static plus another is dynamic head loss that is sometimes we write it k q square. So, this is the total system resistance H system that is static height that pump needs to overcome as well as the dynamic head loss the this part takes care of the frictional losses. So, this part takes care of the frictional losses in wipes and bends etcetera. Also, there are some other losses you know because of the presence of because whenever you are designing a pumping system we need to provide a few valves to control the flow rate. So, there are a few valves because of the presence of valve again we need to take into you know we need to calc we need to consider losses. So, frictional losses in pipe bends plus some losses because of the you know presence of valves etcetera. So, that is the dynamic head loss. So, if I plot the system resistance curve that is H static this is fixed because it depends upon the you know uh, level of pump, pump house as well as the height where we would like to discharge the required water. So, this is the H static and, and this part the dynamic head loss which is essentially a parabolic in nature. So, this is k q square. So, this is the operating point and the head and discharge corresponding to this operating point are the you know this suppose this is q you know operating and this is h operating. Now, you know the head corresponds to q is equal to 0. So, this is the point where q is equal to 0 this is no discharge this is known as shut off head this is shut off head. So, depending upon the you know system resistance we have an operating point. So, this point is the operating point and head and discharge corresponding to this operating points are the you know rated rather actual head and discharge that we that we can expect from this pumping uh, system or the pump operation. Now, this curve is not the actual because whenever fluid start flowing through the pump suction line if I draw now a schematic suppose I have a pump maybe I am considering a radial flow pump and it is used to cater water in a place which is let us say certain height away from the pump uh, axis and it discharge water to a place. Now, uh, it also draws water from a sum and 
then we need to consider the total static height that permits to overcome as well as the frictional losses that we have discussed. Now question is whenever fluid is flowing through the pump suction line and of course when it discharges through the delivery line to the desired points then there will be some other losses and considering all those losses the shut off rate reduces to another point and the actual curve will be like this actual curve will be like this So, this is the actual curve, actual h cube curve that we may expect from that pumping system and there will be some losses. This is the losses in the pump suction side and this is also separation losses in the pump delivery side. So, these are the losses, losses but separation losses and this is also losses in the pump suction side and there may be recirculation losses. Recirculation loss. Although if we carry out experiments in a for a pump to obtain its H cube characteristics that pump manufacturer should supply to the pumping system you know designer because whoever is designing the pumping system he or she needs to know the uh, h cube curve because depending upon the system resistance and after having this h cube curve he might select the operating point whether that operating point is good enough to supply the required amount of water or required amount of fluid to the to that particular case uh, that will depend upon the pump h cube characteristics whatever data we obtain from experiments if we plot it we will be having up h cube curve which is continuously drooping in nature that is continuously decreasing if you if you would like to have higher discharge of course we need to compromise the head that is true because as i increase head then if i uh, see that that up, upon increasing discharge so if i increase discharge that if i would like to obtain higher amount of flow rate through the pumping system then of course frictional losses will be high so i may not expect that the head that i will get will be equal when flow rate was lower. So, uh, that we need to compromise depending upon the requirement of the system. If we need a higher flow rate of course, we have to have uh, we will have relatively uh, lesser head whatever it is uh, it is continuously drooping in nature. Uh, so, with increasing discharge the head that will be developed by head being developed by the pump will be decreasing. This continuously drooping characteristics of the h cube curve of the pump is not the actual one because whenever fluid is flowing rather fluid starts flowing through the suction line and whenever pump is delivering water through the delivery pipe to the desired points then there will be losses uh, recirculation losses. Recirculation losses is very important because whenever fluid is fluid through a you know pipe that is flow through a closed conduit. Uh, you know boundary layer will start develop and because of the presence of solid surface you know there will be non-uniformity in the velocity distribution and because of that uh, there will be recirculation losses in the pump suction line and also there will be separation losses in the delivery line. So, considering these two losses actual curve will be uh, like this that whatever I have plotted here and now question is if I am a system designer if I am given responsibility to design a pumping system I will always prefer to have a h cube curve which will be continuously drooping in nature why that I will discuss. So, this is the h cube curve actual h cube curve. Now, what I said now that if I am a if I have given responsibility to design a pumping system suppose I am asking a pump manufacturer to supply a pump may be it a radial flow pump then I will definitely demand that the h cube curve of that pump should have a continuously drooping characteristics why that I will discuss now that is if I now discuss that issue. So, this is h cube curve this is head developed by the pump and this is q. So, as I said that uh, of course, if I draw the you know experimental experimentally uh, obtained data then I may have a continuously drooping characteristics like this and if I have a system resistance curve like this then no point now because of some reason operator or malfunctioning of the operator if operator tries to you know close the delivery valve placed in the delivery line then of course, this system resistance will be much more steeper. So, system is static height although static height will remain same, but the dynamic head loss will keep you know keep on increasing as a result of which the system resistance curve will be steeper and 
the curve will move towards up. So, there might be a situation because of this, uh, there, there might be a different reasons. I mean, there might be different reason because of malfunctioning of the operator or uh, because of uh, closing of the delivery valve, this curve will try to shift up. To up. Now, if it is a drooping characteristics, there will be no problem as far as the pumping operation is concerned. Now, the if I talk about the actual skew curve that is expected and that is really, you know, the uh, happening whenever, you know, pump starts its operation, that is uh, there will be a losses, recirculation loss in the suction side and also there are losses in the delivery side. Instead of having a, this is, this is continuously drooping characteristics. So, this is continuously drooping characteristics. Now, if I talk about, now if I consider the instead of a continuously drooping characteristics, rather what is the actual curve that is if the pump curve is like this, that uh, and So, if the ideal curve is like this, so maybe this is the shut off head is reducing because of the recirculation losses. So, pump this is the uh, actual shut off head. Now, this is the losses. My question is if I have a pumping, you know, pump operation to the pump characteristics curve like this, instead of a drooping characteristics, I have a curve like this. So, and these are the losses. Now, if my system, this is the new shut off head. Now, my system resistance curve is like this. Suppose, this is my static height and system resistance curve is like this. So, this is my operating point. This is the operating point and the, you know, this is Q, this is H. So, this is the Q operating. Now, pump is always try to experience a relatively lesser system resistance. That is what is expected. So, as I said you because of some malfunctioning of the operator, pump operator or if pump operator closes the delivery valve gradually because of the, because, because of some, you know, because of controlling the flow rate in the delivery lines, then it will, uh, system car will be steeper and then system car, if suppose system car becomes steeper and it, uh, there might be a situation when system car might, might take a shape like this. And then, whenever it closes to the, whenever it appears to the peak point here, then it will suddenly come to the shut off head. Otherwise, so pumps will trip. On the other hand, if I consider the first case, let us say this is the system resistance curve A, when you know operation, operation, uh, operator did not close the valve, then somehow because of as I said that if pump operator start closing the valve gradually, then curve will be steeper and then curve will shift over here and there might be a situation when pump system resistance curve will be here and then again it will come to the here to, to provide a relatively lesser amount of flow rate. Let us say Q 2 operating, this is Q operating 1, this is Q operating 2. So, system resistance curve will now shift to the another point and as if the pump is trying to operate between these two points. So, as I said you the pump will always try to experience a less resistance, less system resistance. So, instead of providing the desired flow rate because of malfunctioning of the operator or because of closing the gradually, because of closing the valve at the delivery line gradually, system resistance might be steeper, system resistance will be steeper and there might be a situation when system resistance curve shift to another point and as if the pump is fluctuating between two, uh, two operating point and it will be like this that just like a pulsating kind of flow that it will give sometimes Q operating 1 and sometimes Q operating 2, this is not a desirable phenomenon, this is not a desirable phenomenon for the pumping operation at all as, as well. So, keeping this in mind, uh, whenever I, uh, I will design or someone will design a pumping system, he or she should always look for a pump H cube curve which will have a continuously dripping characteristic so that the problem because problem related to this, I mean this might happen, so this kind of problem can be avoided. That is what is very important. I mean someone should take into account whenever he or she is selecting the pump and uh, designing the system. 
Okay, so I stop here today. I will discuss uh, in the next lecture.